Good afternoon. Welcome to Inside Indiana Sports Now with Kent Sterling. It's Wednesday, March 31st, 2021. We're brought to you by the great people at Today's Dentistry. Dr. Mike O'Neill, the best dentist that there is. Are you kidding me? He's been my dentist for 27 years. I've never gone to another one. I'll never go to another one. Take control of your dental health. Do it once and for all. 317-849-2933 is the number to call. We're going to talk to Kevin Mawai, the assistant offensive line coach of the Indianapolis Colts. We're going to do that in just a few minutes. Kevin Mawai, of course, a tremendous center for a variety of teams, the Seahawks, and and we remember him in Indianapolis for his time with the Tennessee Titans. He's now the assistant offensive line coach with the Colts, as I said. But first, we're going to talk about Indiana basketball. Two things. This morning, during Breakfast with Kent, I broke down the odds of the guys who are in the transfer portal coming back to Indiana. I didn't talk about Christian Lander, and I did it for this reason. He's off the board. There are no odds for Christian Lander, and I'll tell you why. Because I don't understand the decision-making process that he employed with his family and Archie Miller and the coaching staff in Indiana to decide to forego his senior year of high school and start college early. I don't get it. The senior year of high school should be a great time. And Evansville Wrights would have had a tremendous team. He'd have had a great experience. But they're trying to hustle through stuff. They're trying to move everything a little bit quicker. And people who do that, I just don't trust to make the right decision. The right decision for Christian Lander is to come back to Indiana and learn from Mike Woodson and Thad Mata and the staff that Mike Woodson puts together. I, that much, that's obvious to an adult, right to Christian Lander, I don't know whether it's going to be obvious because going to through that senior year of high school should have been obvious. So he's off the board. I have no odds for Christian Lander. And then there's Race Thompson. I left him off too. And, and Race Thompson has a decision to make. He can go play for Coach Johnson up at Minnesota, close to home, his last year of college basketball. He's been at Indiana for four years. He played his heart out this last year. Both ends of the floor, offensively, defensively, man, he's an undersized four slash five. He's a big, but he's not big. That's a guy who really, really worked and came to play every single day and night and came to practice every single day and night. I have nothing but respect for Ray Thompson. And if he wants to go home and wrap up his college basketball career with Minnesota, I got no problem with that at all. I'd love him to come back because he's a guy who I think sets the tempo as far as work ethic is concerned. He works really hard, and I think he makes those around him work hard. So I'd love to see him come back and work on his shooting because you got to be able to shoot, right? But if he goes to Minnesota, I have no problem with that. Now, let's talk about Mike Woodson and the pitch that he can make to players, both recruits, external recruits, transfers who might come in, or high school kids who might be looking at Indiana, and those who are still there and are trying to make their minds up as to where they're going to play next year, the people in the portal. So let's talk about what Mike Woodson is going to say to these guys. Number one, he's going to say, look, you have at your fingertips here internally NBA evaluation and development that is bar none the best in college basketball. Mike Woodson has been an assistant coach or a head coach in the NBA for a long time, and he's been exceptionally successful at it. And the staff that he's going to put together, they're going to be great at recruiting, they're going to be great at development, and they're going to be great at evaluation because to develop players, you have got to be able to evaluate players. Next, he's going to say, we're going to build a family. And he said this in the press conference. going to build a family of current players, certainly, but then former players too alums who want to come back and be a part of Indiana basketball. And while these guys do not understand Indiana basketball from the year 2000 and back, there are big brain guys who understand how to win at the highest level. And they are going to do everything they can to help Mike Woodson. Number three, a culture of inclusiveness and winning. Mike Woodson knows how to build a winner. He did it in Atlanta. He did it in New York. Winning is important, and you've got to be cohesive as you do it, and Mike Woodson understands that. You can get a great education. Now, that is really like everybody says that. Every school says it, but if you want to go through the Kelly School of Business, that's a hell of a business education. You want music? Ooh, the Jacobs School of Music is awesome. How about sports 
broadcasting, that kind of thing, sports journalism, sports media, the Cuban Center, unbelievable. You want to come to college and learn that stuff? Indiana is fantastic. How about this? Be included among a group of alumni for the rest of your life that is very attractive to employers in a state where your name will be equated to quality. That's marketability that lasts the entire lifetime of the student athlete, right? You are going to be employed in the state of Indiana for the rest of your life. I know everybody thinks they're going to the NBA. They're going to be able to retire with $100 million in the bank. That doesn't always come to pass. And then, finally, you're going to be able to say, look, uh, marketability. I'll tell you about marketability. How about NIL? Name, image, likeness rights that are going to be conferred upon you. Indiana University has an alumni base sick for basketball information that is right at your fingertips. You want to become an influencer in social media? There is no better way to build a Twitter following, a Facebook following, an Instagram following, right? A TikTok following than as an Indiana basketball player, baby. It's just unbelievable, and they're going to have a great time doing it. Now, let's talk to Kevin Mawai, the assistant uh, offensive line coach for the Indianapolis Colts. Number one, Kevin, how'd you decide to get into coaching? I mean, you had a Hall of Fame career as a center. You made a lot of money. Why'd you get into coaching? How'd you do it? Yeah, I I really didn't plan on it. Um, I, you know, I, I spent 16 years in this league. I spent 30 years playing the game, and I was just ready to kind of, you know, ride off in the sunset. And um, but I had a conversation with Dow Loggins, who was a you know, quality control coach for the Titans at the time, and he asked me what I plan on doing. I was like, I don't know. He goes, Are you going to be a coach? I said, There's no way I'm going to be a coach. And uh, he goes, well, what do you want to do after college? I was like, well, I was either going to go in the military and commission as an officer or, or uh, go back as a GA and become a coach. He goes, well, if you thought you were going to become a coach at that point, he goes, chances are you're going to become one sooner or later. And um, as I started training guys and, and working with them, I got the itch. I really enjoyed watching a guy go from a raw, talented guy to learning how to use different tools and, and, and build his toolbox. And, and that became really cool for me. And so I was like, all right, let me do an internship here, do an internship there. And so three training cramps and three OTAs and mini camps and, you know, volunteering here and there, I just, I fell in love with it. And um, for me, it was a challenge to want to, to, to be, put my stamp in this league as a coach. Um, I think some of the greatest offensive lines that have played have had some great coaches. I played for Howard Mudd. I played for Mike Munchak. Um, you know, I played for Bill Muir and, and Doug Marone, and I think all four of those, if guys could have the four coaches I had, um, then you had a pretty good career. And uh, But I think there's a uniqueness to offensive line units. When they're playing a certain way, they know who – other people know who coached that unit. Like, and I've been around Chris Strausser now for a month or two, but I've seen him work, and I knew that, you know, what he did in the past – and when you watch the Indianapolis Colts play, it's got a Chris Strausser slash Howard Mudd stamp to it. And, um, and it's unique. I think when you watch teams that Mike Munchak coached, you know, oh, that's something Mike Munchak does with his guys. And those, those units become recognized by the well, how well they've been coached. And, and for me, that was a goal of mine. That's a challenge. I want to be recognized as one of the best offensive line coaches that leave the game when my time's up. All right. How'd you pursue this job? Did you know Frank – in advance, or, or how'd you get this job? Yeah, I, did, I didn't know, Frank. Uh, I sent him a cold text when I, I heard that uh, Clayton might be leaving. Uh, ironically enough, Clayton was going to take the job at ASU that I thought I was going to get. And so through a mutual friend of mine and Frank's, I got his, his cell phone, shot him a text, and I said, hey, I know Clayton's leaving. I'd be interested. He goes, well, if that happens, hit me back up. We'll happen 24 hours later. And then, of course, we kind of started talking on the phone. It was the first time I'd ever talked to him. Uh, I knew of him. I grew up in college when he played in the Super Bowl with the Buffalo Bills. And so I knew him as a, as a player. And I kind of missed him by a year when he was with the Jets. And I got there as a player. But um, the first time we were on the phone, it, it was just we hit it off. Uh, I think we're like-minded in both, you know, what we believe in personally and professionally. And, and so – 
it just worked. I can't explain it to you other than we, it just felt right. And that's the same thing Frank kept telling me because I don't know, because this just feels right. And so I'm pretty, I was pretty happy about that. Um, you know, I had a couple of loose relationships within the building. I'd met, met coach, you know, Chris Strausser through Howard Mudd, whom I played for. And then I'm, you know, I was very close teammates with Dave Thornton, who's in house as well. And uh, so other than that, it was a cold text to a guy that I'd never met before, but who I'm respected as a coach and as a player over the past. And, uh, you know, one conversation led to another, to another, I finally talked to Chris Ballard and then got an interview and it just worked out. And I know the biggest thing that I've learned about this organization is about the right fit and about having the right people at the right place and, and the culture and continuing that culture that, that Frank and this staff has built. And, um, yeah, I'm just fortunate that, that Frank felt like I fit the culture of this program and hopefully I can bring some positivity and and uh, bring some good stuff to this team. So what have you seen so far as you've watched a video of this offensive line that you got to teach how to play better? Well, I think watching them play in general, they play tough. They play to the ball. They got an edge about them. Love uh, the nastiness that Q plays with. He's around the ball. He's always taking shots and um, he doesn't play passive at all. I think that's pretty, you know, pretty neat to see that. Um, he's an aggressive player. I think that kind of trickles along everybody along the line. I think you know, the same thing for, for Ryan. I think he's got the ability to be an elite center and, um, and he's shown he's got those tools and he's continuing to build it, to build his game. And, um, but just the way they play, I think, you know, it, the schemes that, that the Colts have used in the past, it's, it's indicative of, of what I grew up in, in learning and, and, you know, strong on the double teams, on the backside, front side combos and things like that and playing smart football in the passing game. Um, and, and that's what they've shown. And so what do I hope to bring? I hope to accentuate what Crow Strauser has done with these guys and, and bring a unique twist to it and that I've done it before. And, um, you know, it's one thing to coach it at a very high level, which Chris has done. It's a whole nother thing to play it at a very high level. And I think when you kind of match those two together, you're going to have something unique that the players can really sink their teeth into. Um, I've talked to Ryan, I've talked to, to Q and Braden and those guys, and they're all, you know, they're excited about having a former player in the room with them. They, they respect Chris and what he's taught and, and they believe in what they're, they're doing within the system. Um, you know, but you, know, you get to a point where, okay, I know my fundamentals, like, but how did you do this? You know, like, what's something that you did differently on this technique or, or, or you know, what's your thought process? And, and for me, it's, it's more about the mental part of the game. What are you thinking of when you line up against a guy who's in a three technique and, you know, his number one move is an outside in arm over? Uh, it's those kind of things that I can bring to the table to give them a different insight and all with the ultimate goal of making this unit a better unit so that we can make play in the championship game. And, um, and I think that's what the goal is. And, and it's been really neat. I've gotten to reach out to these guys and getting the text messages back from them and just how excited they are, not just about me being here, but about the changes on this staff and, and about what the future looks like over the next, you know, eight to 10 months. And, you know, obviously our goal next year is to be sitting here having these conversations, talking about having a Super Bowl championship. And and I think that's where these guys are headed. And, and I'm just glad to be a part of it. Like we said in the introduction, you were one of the best centers in the history of the NFL. What do you see in Ryan Kelly? Well, I think he's a really great, a, you know, he's a great player. I've watched him. I'm an LSU guy, so I don't like him from that standpoint because he's an Alabama kid. But uh, but he he was a great player coming out of college, and he's got all the tools to be a, a pretty special player, a, a unique player. Um, he's a smart guy. Watched him on film, and I know what he's capable of doing. But he's a guy that could be that 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 pivot guy for for many you know many years in this league. That's Kevin Mawai, part of the Colts Brain Trust out on West Fifty Sixth Street. Going to do some heavy lifting for the Colts. And, and their staff this offseason can't wait to see the fruits of his labor and that offensive line, whoever the left tackle winds up being. Breakfast with Kent tomorrow morning. It's going to be a little bit later because we're going to be in the Southern Bureau. I cannot wait to talk to you then. Indiana basketball, Colts. We're talking about those two things tomorrow. We'll also tell you what happens tonight. The Indiana Pacers and the Miami Heat. I can't wait to talk to you then. Brought to you by the great people at Today's Dentistry.